subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Junior High School R, Joy Learning, Integrated Science Form 2. I am your facilitator, Ms. Sarah Buama Buabe. Today we're going to look at forces and their effect on substances. Forces and their effect on substances. We have all learned something about forces in primary school. Force is a word that is used in everyday speech, such as, or such in the saying, you can force a horse to the riverside, but you cannot force it to drink. In today's lesson, we will learn the scientific meaning of forces or force. And you will find out about the different types of forces and their effects in our everyday lives. Let's look at some useful words we'll be meeting. We have the first word, tout. Tout. T-A-U-T. Tout. What does it mean? It, it's describing something that is tightly stretched. It's describing or it describes something that is tightly stretched. The second word is friction. Friction. Let's say it once more. Friction. Good. A force that tries to stop one substance or let's take it again friction a force that tries to stop one surface sliding over another a force that tries to stop one surface sliding over another we have the third word lubricant lubricant let's say it again Lubricant, a liquid such as oil that can reduce the friction between two surfaces. A liquid such as oil that can reduce friction between two surfaces or surface. We have the third, the fourth word, pressure, pressure. Pressure, the action of force or weight on something, the action of force or weight on something. The next word is surface tension, surface tension, the ability of the surface of a liquid, the ability of the surface of a liquid to behave as a tight elastic skin the ability of the surface of a liquid to behave as a tight elastic skin then the last word we have fluid 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 anything anything that has the quality of flowing like liquid Air or gas. Anything that has the quality of flowing, like liquid, air, or gas. Let's quickly go through the words again. Tout, friction, lubricant, pressure, surface tension, fluid. I hope you've got all the words and their meaning. Now, let's quickly see if you will remember this. 
list five things you have done today that uses force. List five things you have done today that uses force. Very good. I hope you have all done something today that force was involved. Great. Let's go to the next one. Why is it difficult to walk on a very smooth surface? Why is it difficult to walk on a very smooth surface? The last one, if you bring two magnets close together, how do they affect each other? If you bring two magnets close together, how do they affect each other? Good. I know you had all remembered something and you have it down. Let's check this. With the first one, what you have done today that involves force. We have walking, lifting, running, rubbing of the hands, combing of the hair, opening of drawers if you are not at school probably you might be at home you have done walking today it might be from the car park or from the house to the lorry station or even on the school compound if at home you have opened a door you did comb your hair before going to school all these involved force. With the second question, why is it very difficult to walk on a very smooth surface? It is very difficult to walk on a smooth surface because there is less friction. Because there is less friction. Do you remember what friction is? Very good. You've done very well. A force that tries to stop one surface sliding over another. Because there is less friction, it becomes very difficult to walk on a smooth surface. Now with the last one. I hope you have all seen a magnet before. If you try bringing two magnets together, what do you normally see? Those who have done it before, what do you remember? They attract each other. They attract each other. That is very wonderful. You have all done very well. Today, as we said earlier on, we're going back to our learning objectives. What are we going to do today? By the end of this lesson, I will expect you to be able to define a force demonstrate the effect of what the different types of what force and its effects on our everyday life
Let's get our pen and papers, our notebooks. Let's move along. What is a force? What is a force? From all what we have discussed so far and what we remember, we can say that a force is a push or a pull on an object. A force is a push or a pull on an object. A force is also that which changes. A force is also that which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of an object in a straight line. I have an object in a straight line. A force is applied to that object in that straight line. What happens to the force? It changes the state. Or it changes the form in which it was. So if it is in the straight line, it will no longer be in the straight line. It moves away from the straight line. We're taking that again. We are saying a force is a push or a pull on an object. A force as a push or a pull on an object. A force can also be defined as that which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion of an object in a straight line. And just as I was explaining, you have an object in a straight line. Force is applied to that object in that straight line. It changes the state in which the object is in. It no longer be in that straight line. It moves away from that straight line. Force is measured in Newtons. Force is measured in in newtons force is measured in newtons let's get one more example if you pull a door handle if you pull a doll handle or you push a friend on a swing, if you pull a door handle or push a friend on a swing, what do you normally observe? You are in contact with the person or the handle. That is the door. I hold the handle of the door and pull or push. I am in contact with the handle of the door. When we go out to play, our friends do sit on the seesaw or on the swing. We push them. We are in contact with the rope or the person on the swing. These forces are called contact force. These forces are called contact force. Examples of such forces are friction and tension in ropes friction and tension in ropes
We will try one activity, and after that, you will get it very well. We have the simple rubber band. You have it in our various homes. We normally tie our items with the band. Some even play with it. Let's go through this activity. We put a rubber band around the forefinger and the thumb. So that is the thumb. That is the forefinger. That is the middle finger. The ring finger. And the little finger. Now we are going to use these fingers. The thumb and the forefinger. So, I have my rubber band in here. Then let's see if I can fold a paper. That is a piece of paper. I hope you are trying it. Let's all get our rubber band and try this. But we have to be very careful. So that is our rubber band. Then, place in between the thumb and the forefinger. We fold a piece of paper over the middle of the band. So we have it here. This way. We have it here. This way. I hope you can all see. That is great. That is my paper. Piece of paper folded. Then the rubber band. I have the rubber band folded in the middle. Uh, sorry, I have the paper folded in the middle of the rubber band. That is the first one. Great. I can see you have all gotten it because we normally do this or play with it. Those who have come into contact with catapult, we also use it a lot. Now let's try to pull the rubber band and the paper together. So with the paper and the rubber band, let's try to pull it. Let's try to pull it. Let's try to pull it. You have to be very careful. Hold it carefully. So that is the forefinger and the thumb. You have your piece of paper folded in the middle of the band. Now we're pulling it gently and carefully. What do you think will happen to the rubber band? What do you think will happen to the rubber band? Very good. A stretches. Great. You can see that the band is stretching. The size has now increased. The length, it has now stretched. If I release the rubber band, or let's take it from this angle, release the rubber band and the paper. Try releasing the rubber band and the paper. Try releasing the rubber band and the paper. Try releasing the rubber band and the paper. What did the rubber band do to the paper? For the sake of those who just joined us, we are going through a simple activity. We have a rubber band and a piece of paper folded in the middle of a rubber band, which is round, ar which is around the forefinger and the thumb.
we try to pull the rubber band and the paper together to see what will happen to the rubber band. We are now releasing the rubber band and the paper gradually and gently. Now the question is, what did the rubber band do to the paper? I hope you have all your observation written down. Should we take the activity once again? Good. Let's get a rubber band and a piece of paper. We put the rubber band around the forefinger and the thumb. That is the forefinger. We have the thumb here, the forefinger, the middle finger, the ring finger, and the little finger. So we're going to use these two fingers. We have the rubber band in here around the forefinger and the thumb. We fold our paper and place in the middle or over the middle of the band. We try to pull or try to pull the rubber band and the paper together. What happens to the band? Let's release the rubber band and the paper. What did the rubber band do to the paper? Very good. I hope your observation is as good as mine. Your finger exerts a contact force on the rubber band. Your finger exerts a contact force on the rubber band and it stretches. Your finger exerts a contact force on the rubber band and it stretches. So we have the finger exerting a contact force on the rubber band. Then it stretches. There is tension force in the rubber band. There is tension force in the rubber band. When the rubber band is released, it exerts a force on the paper. When the rubber band is released, it exerts a force on the paper. And it makes it fly away. It makes it fly away. The paper is gone. It makes it fly away. Forces and strings, wires and ropes are tension forces. Forces and strings, wires and ropes are tension forces. That is very good. You had a perfect observation. The finger exerts a contact force on the rubber band and it stretches. There is tension force in the rubber band. When the rubber band is released, it exerts a force on the paper and makes it fly away. Forces and strings, wires and ropes are tension force or tension forces. Let's take one more activity. Let's get ourselves a piece of wooden block. 
Let's get ourselves a piece of wooden block. Or we should cut a piece of wooden block. Attach a string to a nail driven into one face of the block. A piece of wooden block which is cut. You attach a string to a nail driven into one face of the block. Place the block on a wooden table. Place the block on a wooden table. And pull the string. And pull the string. Observe and record what happens. Cut a piece of wooden block. Attach a string to a nail driven into one face of the block. We place the block on a wooden table and pull the string. Let's observe and record what happens. The third step in the activity, make the table slippery, the same table you're using. You make it slippery by smearing it with a thick soap solution. So with the first one, the block is placed on the table. Then you try pulling the block. With that same table, you smear the surface, making it very slippery with a thick soap solution. Pull the block over the soap smeared surface. Let's look at that observation too. We are taking the second activity again. I hope this time you put it down. Cut a piece of wooden block. You attach a string to a nail driven at one surface or one face of the block. You place the block on a wooden table and pull the string. What do you observe? With that same table, you make it very slippery by smearing thick soap solution on it. Put the wooden block on and try to pull it this time. What will be your observation? Let's try to ponder over it. Great. It is quite difficult to pull the block over the bare table. It is quite difficult to pull the block over the bare table. The force which makes it difficult to pull the block is called friction. It is quite difficult. To pull the block over the bare table. 
the force which makes it difficult to pull the block is called friction. Can we give other examples? I have nothing in my palm. When I rub, I could hear a sound. It is not as easy as I having my palm being smeared with oil or a cream. As the palm rubs each other or rubs each other, it creates what is known as friction. Now, the soap solution reduces the friction between the table and the wooden block. So, the block moves more easily over the table. Just as I gave the example with the rubbing of the palm. You will realize that if there is no oil or cream in the palm, you could hear the sound, the friction be producing a sound. But if there is oil, even if there is a sound being produced, it is minimal or there wouldn't even be a sound produced at all. With the soap on the table, it makes the wooden block easily to move over the table. The soap is now acting as a lubricant. The soap is now acting as a lubricant. We have already gotten what a lubricant is. And we gave examples of lubricants. Can we put down at least two? Very good. Thumbs up. Oil. Oil. We have soap too. That is very great. There are other types of forces whose sources do not require contact with objects to which they are applied. There are other types of forces whose sources do not require contact with objects to which they are applied. These are known as the non-contact forces. They are known as what? The non-contact forces. I hope you do remember the contact forces. I hope you do remember the contact forces. When you try to pull or push a door handle, when you push a friend on a string, uh, on a swing, sorry, we were also looking at friction and tension in ropes. All these are contact forces because you are in contact with the person or the handle. With the non-contact forces, you do not come into contact with the object to which you are applying the force on. 
we have gravitational force we have magnetic force and electrostatic force let's take those beautiful names again we are looking at forces whose source do not require contact with the object to which they are applied we are making a uh, we are looking at gravitational force, magnetic force, and electrostatic force. Now, let's look at a simple scenario here. If you drop an object if you drop an object what do you observe you will realize that the object falls to the ground if I drop an object the object doesn't stay or hangs in the air it falls to the ground the gravitational force is causing the object to move downwards if you drop an object you will see that it falls to the ground the gravitational force is causing the object to move downwards now what is a gravitational force we can boldly say that it is a force that pulls object towards the earth gravitational force is the force that pulls object towards the earth let's go through our third activity let's go through our third activity we need pins and a magnet now i place some pins on the decks I place some pins on the decks. Then I bring a magnet close to the pins. What did you notice? That is wonderful. You write your observation down. Now, if you have pens, if you have pencils, any coin around, as many materials possible in the classroom, or if you're at home, anything around your study table, try bringing it close to a magnet. Now, write a list of materials that you can pick up using your magnet write a list of materials that you can pick up using your magnet All right. You realize that in activity three or in our third activity, the magnet pulls the pins towards itself. So we have, we have our pins here. The magnet pulls the pins towards itself. 
there is an area or there is an area around the magnet. There is an area around the magnet or the area around the magnet where it can attract the pins. The area around the magnet. The area around the magnet where it can attract the pins is called a magnetic field the area around the magnet where it can attract the pins is called the magnetic field Magnets will only attract items that have iron in them. Magnets will only attract items that have iron in them. And I think you saw it when you brought your pens, your books, your erasers, and your pencils close to the magnet. It did not attract them. Or... I did no if the item is having an iron in there definitely it will be attracted by the magnet we have this on our screen and we are going to try this out. We will copy it down and try during our leisure time. With two labeled magnets giving you, with two labeled magnets giving you, suspend one bar magnet from a rigid support. With two labeled magnets giving you, Suspend one bar magnet from a rigid support. That is the first one. Bring one end of the other magnet near the suspended bar magnet and observe what happens. So you have two bar magnets labeled. That is magnet a magnet b you suspend one bar magnet from a rigid support you bring one end of the other magnet near the suspended bar magnet and observe what happens you reverse the ends of the magnet in your hand and bring it close to the suspended magnet again. Very simple activity. You reverse the end of the magnet in your hand and bring it close to the suspended magnet again. This is a circular magnet. We are talking about two bar magnets with one suspended from a rigid support. Then one magnet in our hand. We try to bring the one that is not suspended very close, one end of it very close to the one which is suspended. Then we observe what happens. After that, we reverse the ends. So when we pick the bar magnet, magnet A, magnet B, we labeled the magnet. Two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. So if you, you brought the North Pole close to the suspended bar magnet, you observe what happened. Afterwards, you turn and bring the South Pole close to the suspended magnet 
I hope you have it down. That is very good. I am expecting that by the time you are done with this nice and beautiful simple experiment, the suspended bar magnet will move when the other magnet is brought close to it. The suspended bar magnet will move when the other magnet is brought close to it. Magnets can push or pull each other. Magnets can push or pull each other. The magnets will move. Or the magnet moves even though there is no contact between the magnet or the two magnets. So with the suspended bar magnet and the one you have in your hands, when you take it closer, you observe that the magnet which is suspended will be moving. There is no contact between the two bar magnets, but yet it's moving. So we can boldly say that when it comes to non-contact force, this is a typical example. You will notice that as the bar magnet come close to the other one, it moves. That case is too, it will not move, but it will rather pull the other one towards itself. Now we are looking at our last activity, which I will also expect you to try your hands on. Cut pieces of paper and place them on your decks. Get a comb and comb your hair vigorously with a plastic comb. Or you can comb your hair vigorously with a plastic comb. You try to bring the comb close to the piece of paper. Then you observe what happens. This activity is very simple. I will expect that by the time you are done, with that activity, you will notice that the comb becomes electrically charged after it has passed or it has been passed several times through the hair. The charged comb possesses a force which is called electrostatic force. The charge comb possesses a force which is called electrostatic force. This attracts pieces of paper or the pieces of paper to the comb even though there is no initial contact between the comb and the piece of paper. We are still on the non-contact forces. We have seen that of the bar magnet then that of the comb and the piece of paper. Please, let's get the activities or the activity again, which is activity four. If you don't have it, kindly write it down. Cut pieces of paper and place them on your desk. You comb your hair vigorously with a plastic comb. You bring the comb near the piece of paper. Then you observe what happens. Just 
as I said, I will expect that by the time you are done with that activity, you will notice that the comb becomes electrically charged after it has passed or it has been passed several times through the hair. The charge comb possesses a force which is known as the electrostatic force. These attract the paper to the comb, although there is no contact or there had not been contact with or there is no initial contact between the comb and the piece of paper. Let's all try it and confirm the observation. We can now say that electrostatic force is the force exerted by stationary electric charge. Is the force exerted by stationary electric charge. Very good. Let's quickly sum up all what we have done for the day. We were looking at contact forces. We said contact forces are pushes or pull. Pushes or pulls. Friction and tension are typical example of contact force. We had done a simple experiment to prove this. We had a rubber band and a piece of paper. We placed the paper in the middle of the rubber band. We tried to pull it gradually. Then we realized that tension had been built in the rubber band. After releasing the paper gradually and the rubber band, the paper flew away. We also looked at non-contact forces. And we said that with non-contact forces, you don't come into contact or there is no initial contact between the object, the forces being applied on. So non-contact forces can move things without touching them. We perform two simple activity that proved that. A bar magnet or two bar magnets, one being suspended and the other one trying to pull it towards itself because it had been brought near to it. We also use the same bar magnet, place our pins on the table. Then we observe that the pins had moved towards the bar magnet. There was no contact between the paint and that of the bar magnet. But there is a force that is pulling it towards itself. We also gave one example when we dropped an object. Then we said there is a force that pulls the object towards the earth. 
which is the gravitational force. Now, we also looked at the area around a magnet where it can attract magnetic substance. The area around a magnet where it can attract magnetic substance. And we said that area or field is known as the magnetic field. The magnetic field. Now we had looked at magnetic force, electrostatic force, gravitational force, all as an example of non-contact force. So you see, science is everyday life activity. And whatever we do, we should remember science is taking place. The walking, the pushing of our friends, opening of doors, running, all involved science. And which is what? Force. All too soon, we have come to the end of this lesson. Next week, same time, we will meet for another wonderful lesson. Hope to see you. Bye for now. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.